Hello and welcome to our first watercolor class. I am so excited. Um, all right, so first what you should have in your hand um, that I got is you should have a set of watercolors, okay? And then you should have um, a palette of some sort. And I gave you a handful, a handful of brushes. Now we're gonna go over the kinds, okay? And also some water and maybe like a rag or something for your watercolors to wash off, okay? So here, this is your watercolor set. Now I'm gonna get you familiar with the brushes first. Um, and then we're going to um, talk about the paint, okay? So you have a handful of brushes and you have two kinds of brushes, okay? It's actually on the back of your um, sheet here. A round brush okay and this is called a flat brush so this is where your brushes came in and this shows you in the back and so you got a handful of each kind so you got you got some large large to small flat brushes okay and then you got you got now this looks kind of pointed, but since it's new, you're gonna as you get to use it, it's gonna be more of a round feeling. Okay, it's they have it packaged so they don't go everywhere. Okay, so that looks more. So you have all different, lots of different sizes. Um, whoop, this one's back upside down. Some are almost I consider you can almost use it as a liner brush, and that's another brush I got you separately is a liner brush, okay? So um, this tapers to be pretty thin. Some liner brushes are thinner than others at the store, all right? The difference between a round brush and a liner brush, even though I think sometimes round brushes could be actually have more of a skinnier line than some round uh, liner brushes, this gets thick and then it tapers. This is kind of just like one the same thickness throughout, okay? So there's your brushes. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about paint. You probably obviously have used paint before, um, but you probably have used like tempera paint or acrylic paint. And what you're probably used to doing is taking, you know, your paint and just squirting a generous amount and maybe a little bit of water, a generous amount, and then painting and squirting a lot out. These are very small tubes for a reason. It doesn't take much to paint a lot with just a little bit of watercolor. In fact, think of this as a very concentrated paint that has like no water in it, and you're adding you're adding the water to, or the substance to make a lot more paint versus acrylics that kind of already have the more of the liquid in it. This is pretty concentrated. You don't need much. So I want you to do is take your black. Uh, popping this out. I want to take a, probably just a black paint will be good. And open it up. Okay. I literally want you to put. like a dot. I mean, I'm literally, that's all you really need. You might want to shake these because that seemed like a little, I would shake them first. These are brand new. And most of the stuff I have at home are already pre, I'll try this. So it might come out a little, okay, that's, yep, that's it. And it kind of, because this is plastic, it kind of just went and condensed to that. So that's literally what you need, okay? And take your cup of water. I would take, it doesn't matter, just take any brush right now except your liner brush. So either, or I would start with a round just to, so you might have to, since it's brand new. All right, dip your, your brush in water and you could just add a little water in here. Okay, 
I want you to play with this for a few minutes. And with all your... This up, maybe, yeah, play with your liner brush, too. Um, and see the difference with different water. Um, I want you to just play around and get a feel for your brushes. Okay, you might want to push down and pull up. You might want to just get used to the consistency of the paint. Um, add more water or do... Before you add water, maybe you can, I think I already add water this, do it like straight up. I think I added water, but before you add water, maybe trying to paint. Um, I want you to take some, all, you don't have to do all your brushes, but at least mess around with your round brush. And also try a flat brush, okay? I really watered that down. Okay. And you know how it's not, um, you're used to temper paint. You can get thicker, but watercolors is pretty light like this. And then you add layers to it. Okay. So you're not going to have that thick, solid acrylic temper paint feel. Okay. So I just want you to mess around with this. Just to get a feel of what the watercolor is like. Um, so you're not like totally never have a feel for it, okay? So do that for like, I don't know, five, ten minutes, okay? After that, I want, I made a color wheel for you. Actually, I'm going to do this. This, this is what I made. This we're going to use next week, okay? We're just going to use this this week okay um, and you're probably thinking oh I've seen a color wheel before this is a little elementary um, but actually you'd be surprised uh, what a color wheel is for is to show you the primary colors and what two primary colors mixed together makes what other uh, what like what red and yellow make if you mix together and um, the different kinds of colors you can make with the primary colors and you're probably thinking um that's so elementary school but you'd be surprised how many adults when i've done crafts with them or just like did some fun you know art tonight they'd be like what makes purple or i don't know how to make green it, i get these questions all the time and so to, even though if you might know this this will be in just a nice chart a reminder okay so i want you to do is all I want you to use is your red, yellow, and blue paint. Okay, so we got uh, we have two blues. Um, let's do we got one yellow, which is lemony yellow, and these might not be true primary color, like, there's different shades of yellow and different shades of red. This is crimson. Um, oh, we have two reds too. Oh, I gotta make another two. Okay, good. It's only one red. Um, there's different shades of red and there's different shades of blue. Um, so you might not get the true, uh, pure red, uh, uh, red, yellow, and blue. So, but this will just at least give you an idea of what colors mix what colors at least. Okay. So you got your crimson red you want. Your lemon yellow, and I think we're gonna go with. I'm gonna go with the lighter cobalt blue. I think the um, the dark blue is a little too overpowering. Okay, shake them up. Shake your paints up. All right, and I want you to put a small amount of color in each. I don't want to add like that much. Just a little bit. Barely use any in the tube. These will go way past your class. These paints will last for a long time. And then put yellow. That one came out good. I wonder. I've never used this brand before. I used the um palette paints and you could get watercolors in a palette which means 
it kind of reminds me of the um the old style kitty watercolors where it's like in a tray you can actually get professional watercolors like that but i got you guys tubes because i feel like this gives you a little more experience and control and you can mix more than those palette ones the palette ones i have used this brand and it's very good the two ones this is the first time and then the red all right this is again you don't want to you could always add more but the idea is you don't want to squeeze out like you would with acrylic paint okay i'm gonna put this aside so i can show you the wheel here okay all right so i want you to look at the first the upright triangle and our primary colors are going to go in each uh, corner of this, in this triangle. There's an upside down triangle. That's going to be something else. Okay. So we got this part, this part, and this part. Okay. We're going to now add a little water. I would, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think what brush. I would probably use a round brush, but if you're more, it doesn't really matter. We're just going to be putting color in. We're not going to do a lot of techniques. So whatever brush you're comfortable with, I'm probably going to go with the round brush myself, just to let you know. All right, I'm going to make sure. All right, so I'm going to take, I'm going to do the top corner yellow. All right, it's usually, I just didn't really know. I'm going to do yellow. I'm making decisions as I go, go here. So bear with me. And you're not, I don't know, I don't want you to satur saturate it with water, but I want you to get enough where it just kind of glides. Because I do want this a little, like, I don't want it to look like a wash, but, I, you know, uh, I want a little more solid in some of the techniques we're going to learn. But we're just going to simply blot this out with color. And you can get see how you can still get a bright color of watercolor. And, I mean, I literally don't have much color. I mean, I didn't squeeze a lot out of the tube. So, I mean, you can see. Okay, so there's your yellow. Let me wash the brush. All right, next we're going to do blue right here. I'm interested to see because this is not the true blue I usually would have picked. Looks like I did took out blue twice here, but talking I was not paying attention. But um, I would love this to be more of a. It's not too bad actually. I just want you to fill it in. Don't. This is not a normal watercolor hello paint, but on a like a project. I just want you to fill it in, and this will get used, help you get used to like the consistency of your paint. Also, before you start tackling landscapes or whatever we're going to be doing in class, and if it gets a little watery like that, it dries. Don't worry about. That's actually. Um, pretty normal with watercolor okay so don't just try to get the color in as much as you can okay and the bigger pieces might be better for round brushes if you really and not round the uh, flat ones if you want to use the flat I just like to control the thin tip to go around but as long as you get the color in that's all I care about so much of technique and this is going to be the red so these are your primary colors okay and this is all we're going to use these three colors for this project today I'm not going to use any other color in the 
and they're set. There you go. All right, now I want you to do, we're gonna color in our um, complementary colors. And what are complementary colors is what, uh, actually we'll go over that once we fill in why they're called complementary colors, but this is what they're called. Um, so what happens when we mix yellow and red, right? I'm gonna put that color here, which is orange. And what happens when you mix yellow and blue is green. So we're gonna put green here. And we're gonna uh, what happens when you mix blue and red is purple. Now, I said we're only gonna use these three colors, and that's true. I don't want you to grab your green in your set. I don't want you to grab your purple, and I don't want you to grab your orange. We're gonna mix these colors. I know that you have these colors in your set, all right, but I don't want you to touch them, okay? So what we're gonna do, we are going to use these later. The ones, the red I already put out. Okay, so first we're gonna do orange. So we want these two. And I want you to put red, a dot of red, and a very small, and a dot of yellow. Why am I not using the ones I already squared out? It's because we're going to actually use them in a little bit. And this will give you more control, I think, to mix than trying to scoop um, the paint with your brush and try to get exact amount. I figured just by putting it together like this would be easier to get the same amount of paint. Uh, okay. And you can add a little water, actually might make it easier to mix. And the red might be a little overpowering, we'll see. No, it looks like it might be pretty good. Add a little more water. Maybe a little more yellow, because you don't want it a red yellow, you want it yellow. And sometimes... too much but you want to get like an orange and like I said this isn't a true red like a fire engine red that looks see that's the color you want see how that's orange okay and we're gonna fill this in right here and you can keep just dipping your brush So now you know by looking at this chart, yellow and red make yellow, yeah, and yellow and red make orange. Okay, we already discussed this, but we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So we can get some yellow and blue. So we have that there. I'm gonna go to the next. Again, you might need a little more yellow because these aren't true um, pure colors and um, that's a little much. Um, so sometimes these can be more dominant than I want. Try to get same amount on maybe a little more yellow, but you want that green. Let's see what happens. I think I got a little too much yellow, so I'm gonna put it over here and just keep adding the yellow I need. So yeah, it looks like it's a little too dark yet, so I'm gonna scoop up them. I think you don't want a yellow green either. 
see what I can do here. I think that's pretty good. And then you can still grab paint for the other ones. So that's probably the greenest I can get, honestly. This isn't a true blue, and it's but I just want you to get the principle here. So we're gonna color this green. I would love this to be more of a bright green, it's supposed to be, but but honestly when you when you uh spread it out it's not so bad actually. It's more of a yellow green, but this is the greenest we're gonna get with this set. Okay, and the last is purple, same idea. This you could probably do a little more evenly. And the other ones you had to add probably just a tad more yellow. This one you could, probably, you could do probably exactly. Come on, red. There we go. Is that good? I have to add more. We'll see. Always experiment. I like mixing colors. It's fun. You get to know your set, which is another reason I wanted to do this the first class. You get to know your set, your colors. There we go. It's purple. Add a little more water. And we're going to put purple here. Okay, so why is this complementary colors? Because if you look at the red or a blue and you go across, go right across the color wheel, so this blue is orange, is across from orange. This is um, called, this complements blue, which means pretty much they, they, they look good together. Purple and yellow are complementary colors. They kind of have a good contrast, but they look good. And red and green, if you notice, these are the colors of Christmas. Okay, there's, there's a reason for that, I think. So if you know this, ever notice the um, Elmer's glue, they use these colors. All right, so not only is it just to know what colors mix colors, it's also to know what colors go together, okay? So the last thing, um, we're going to mix the yellow and the orange together, and the yellow and the green. So what do you think that happens? So I'm gonna take, um, all right, let's, this is the orange, and I used a lot of it, unfortunately. Hopefully it didn't dry. I'm just gonna use the corner of it, because I wanna use the other corner. I'm just gonna add some yellow here. Some yellow, my goodness, hold on. I'm trying to use Savage, what I got. And this is gonna make an orange yellow. And that's what you wanna put in here. I wish I mixed more, I wish I mixed more colors up. I have the yellow here also. I'm trying to, I might have to make another orange. Unfortunately, I'm trying to, I'm trying to uh, save what I made, but so this should be like a yellow orange. Okay. And then try, I'm gonna have to add a little more, make more orange here real quick. Can I get that orange back? And so what happens if you add red to it? You get a red orange. I'm gonna add a little more red here. From the original red. And you see how I barely have any paint, like at all. 
we're not going to usually do that this extreme but you can see watch with this that little paint oh this is a big area though i still can paint a lot i need a little more red but you probably want one more paint than i have not too much orange and this is you know you gotta experiment with this stuff Okay, red. Let's see. I just want... What you can do if you run out of orange is just take red and make orange again, but add more red to it. There we go. It should be like a red-orange almost the same man this yellow is better than i thought it would be a bit more <laughs> i definitely want more red there we go see i'm getting to know this brand of paint too you would have told me to mix my acrylics or my other old watercolor paints. I'd be like, I know this. Just also helps you get to know your paints, like I said. All right, see how that's a little more red than the orange next to it, but still kind of an orange, and that's what you want. Okay, and then let's just go around the clock here. Uh, purple try to find your purple here uh, I'm just gonna add let's see we got red up oh, I ran out red okay and honestly as we do this man um we're painting pretty solid here um this is a we're actually using a lot of watercolor for what it is uh, when you do um projects you'll notice we'll layer a lot or we're, we're not doing such a solid colors let's see how this it's kind of got lighter huh I want to get it to be red. And you might have to just keep adding and there we go. Add just keep adding and messing around till you get the color you want. Okay? And then blue and purple. Or alternatively, if you already used all your purple like I did, you could just um do um red and blue to make purple but lean on more towards the blue okay because that's all that is it's purple but just with more blue on it where's my blue there's a blue and red so i'm going to take just a little red and put mostly blue in here See how that yeah, this is more on the blue side. I like it a little more. No, I think I got it. Okay. And then two more to go. Your green and the blue. So if you have green left, great. You can just add a little more blue. I have a little green left, so I'm just gonna add a tad blue. Sorry. I stood up and started mixing. <laughs> 
just looks not blue enough. There we go. Again, very little paint. And I'm using a lot of paint for in terms of watercolor. Well, this is a lot just to just keep adding water or dip your brush in water. And this is just to like show you like, you know, you can make green, but you can make different shades of green. And honestly, if you go online, look up watercolor wheels or color wheels, you'll find wheels with, you can find infinite amount of wheels with, you can have like a hundred shades of green. You know what I mean? This is pretty simple wheel, but this is just to give you an idea, but you can find charts that shows a lot more in this. And the last is take your green and just add more yellow. I am just going to actually have a little green in here. A little. Let's see. I want blue. I'm just going to add a little more blue. I want very little. There we go. How does that look? Perfect. And that's just how generally your wheels look like, all right? So this is just a tool you're gonna, it's just gonna help you out for the rest of the class. Just to understand colors, understand how to mix colors, under, get used to the consistency of the paint which will really help you the rest of your class. All right, so practice this, and I'll see you next week.